Hi, my name is Brett from Bertitude. Today in this session, what I'm going to discuss or review really with you is looking at the process behind when we do what we call like a robbery. Now, the reason we would do a robbery is that we may have like an aircraft that is unserviceable and we can't get the part from that. But we do have like a, a donor aircraft that's available and then we can remove a service component from that aircraft to service another aircraft. And that's in general terms what we call like a robbery. But what I've thought about is that there may be the other different sort of variations how we actually manage that under different conditions. And that's what I'm going to cover. The reason I'm doing this is really to explain the difference between like a robbery internally uh, for different sort of customers. And then like if it's going to be a wing to wing robbery. So there's different ways of doing it and managing it uh, to make it, keep it uh, in the form of compliance. The reason I'm doing it is because we've had a shout out from one of our subscribers and that's why I'm trying to expand a little bit more to obviously uh, help them in understanding the sort of the process. And likewise, you may already have a procedure in place, which is really good if you do. But if you don't, then it's worth just sitting back and watching what I'm going to explain. Uh, remember, I'm only going to look at top level, so you may need to dive down a little bit more detail. But really, I'm going to explain the process and how, how you're going to manage that. If you do like the video, then please give us a like at the end of it or during it. And likewise, if you've got any sort of comments or you think I've said something wrong, I don't mind, then just tell me uh, and then I can obviously review that and give you some sort of feedback if that's the case. That's it. Okay, so let's just go back and now look at the uh, the flip chart and review certain things. So if I just draw like two boxes for this to start off with. So I've got like a, the first sort of box, that'll be like the aircraft number one, okay? And then I'll draw another box. I've got aircraft number two. Okay, and what we're trying to do really is we want to remove a component from this aircraft and fit it to that aircraft. All right, so we're going to rob something, wherever that is. And normally we would talk about like an LRU. So an LRU is like a, a line replaceable unit. There'll be a, some sort of black box maybe. Uh, I'm going to remove it from that aircraft uh, and then we're going to fit it to that aircraft to make this aircraft serviceable. So this is the, like the donor aircraft. And you may have like a maintenance facility that where you have like a, a there's like a long term aircraft that's on maintenance and you because of the shortage of, sp shortage of spares or components you may actually rob parts from that to service other parts of other parts of the aircraft or your fleet and so on now there's like maybe like there's two sort of like uh ways of looking at this or to, like two different sort of scenarios so let's just say just for just bear with me at this moment in time so let's just go with me uh, I'll go with it. The first one, scenario sort of number one, is we're going to do like a robbery. Okay, so that's the first sort of scenario where we're just going to remove that component from one customer and it's going to fit it to a different customer. Okay, so the customer basically is different. All right, so the customers are different. And then the other sort of scenario we're going to have is what we call uh, a wing to wing robbery. Now, that's number, it's like scenario number two. So it'll be wing to wing. And I'll explain what the difference is in a minute, but really that's the same customer. Or what you could say, same customer, same operator. All right, that's how it works. So let's say, for example, 2E, that's the both of your aircraft. Could be Jet 2, same sort of thing, your air, same aircraft. They're owned and managed by the same organization. That's what I mean by like a wing to wing. All right, okay. So let me just dive down now into this uh, the robbery where the customers are both different. Now we need to manage it in a certain sort of way, I suppose. So let's just think about this sort of general sort of terms. When we remove that component from the aircraft, the first sort of steps we need to do is we need to like raise a work pack, right? And then obviously we're going to record, uh, record the sort of like details, aren't we? About the component, right? Okay, so we're going to record it. We're also going to give that component that we just removed Put a green label on it because it is serviceable, right? It's not unserviceable, so we need to put a green serviceable label on it. 
And don't forget if this uh, component, just to bear in mind, if this component has what we call like hours, lives or cycles, then we need to think about those hours and the life of that. Okay, because that's important, right? That means to ask us to think about ourselves. If we are going to do it, we need to capture that as well. That information may, may not be able to be provided by you. We need to maybe need to be able to reach out to the, uh, the camo, the people who actually manage the aircraft, and they should be able to give you some sort of details if it's a life component and tracking and all that, because we need to record that when we move it to one aircraft, from one aircraft to another. The next step really is that once we've removed it, we need to inspect it, make sure it's in good condition, serviceable and so on. So we would really need to really raise a Form 1. And the Form 1 in a maintenance organisation, this is, really what we're, the only type of release that we are able to release that component under is of the status of work you can do. You can only either inspect it, so that they can be inspected slash tested. Okay, I'm really, that, that's, I'm referring to uh, block 11 there, the status of work. That's what that refers to. So you're going to inspect something and you're going to test it if that's the case. And then what you would be doing is you'd also be putting in block 12 some sort of supporting sort of comments in the remarks about that component. So if it has like life hours or cycles, you're going to record that uh, in the block 12. And also you're going to include any AMM data and so on, what you did it in accordance with, yada, 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 all that sort of good stuff, right? So record it. Once you've removed it and raised your work pack, you've given it a form so you've inspected it. And don't forget that person needs to be authorised and approved to do that within your own organisation. Then once you've done that, the next sort of step really, you need to give it to stores. So the stores department, okay, are going to book it in. Book in that sort of uh, item. And what they're going to use from like the, the, like the traceability is that form one. So that form one is going to be used in order for the stores to book that item in and so on, right? Once that item has been booked into stores, it's done all the, and they've done they've checked the form one, it's all been completed properly and so on, then therefore what we then do on the number one aircraft, we raise uh, a work pack or a, a line number for the maintenance pack of this on, on the maintenance entry. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to book out the uh, the components from stores. Okay, so once we book out from uh, the from stores, stores are going to give us a batch number and a copy, or maybe have the original form one. All right, that we're going to have. And that's going to be going to our sort of work pack. And remember, then we're going to do all our normal sort of like a, a maintenance actions, i testing and so on. So we're going to they're going to test it and inspect it and make sure it's all good and so on. If I just go back to this bit here, just to clarify as well, there may be a requirement, for example, a log card. So that may need a log card. Depends on the component or the traceability. If it's like a, if it has its own sort of log card, you need to be aware of that. But that's just a general sort of the, with the process how it work. So just to confirm, two different customers for robbery, we're going to raise a work pack, record the details in that work pack. We're going to fit a green label to the item. We're then going to raise a form one for the item, and it's going to be under released under inspected slash tested under block eleven status of work. In block 12, we're going to recall all the sort of details, what we've recorded, uh, removed it in accordance with, all that sort of stuff, what it should be tested in accordance with when we fit it back to the aircraft. We're going to give it to stores, they're going to book it in. We then raise a work pack for this aircraft, and then we're going to basically book that component out of stores. Uh, their stores are going to give us a batch number, some sort of copy of a traceability, so the, so the form one, if that's the case. And then we're going to do all our maintenance testing and inspection, as you would do anything, then you book out a component from stores and then we send it off service for. And that's that bit done. So that's one example. When we think about wing to wing, there's, there's a slight different way of doing it uh, and a different sort of variation. 
So if you think about it, the wing to wing, the difference is really is that if you think about it, the camo right is already like managing the aircraft, right? So in theory, it's under their form of control. And therefore, they have some sort of traceability about all the components and the, and, the, and the aircraft. They've got all the records, is what I'm trying to say. So, in theory, what you, the way you'd actually work at this time is, yes, you'd still like do this bit here. So, you still like raise a work pack uh, and record all the details on the hours and cycles and so on. But really, there's no requirement for you to raise a Form 1 if it's the same customer. So, if it's the same customer, there is no sort of real reason to do that, okay? Because you've got the green label, got your procedure, that would be approved by the competent authority. And then on the new aircraft who's gonna actually receive it, you still raise a work pack. So in theory, you're gonna do this one and only this one. You still may have like a, some sort of form that you'd fill in just to track the, the track for the, or track or the first, provide some sort of traceability from that item itself. And that is the way it would actually work. Okay. The form one really is only required if the both customers are total, uh, or the, the owners or the operators of those aircraft are completely different. Because in theory, you'd have two different sort of like camos. So you'd have one camo for this company, how it's being managed, and one camo for that company. All right. So if the operators are different, two different sort of camos, then you have to go through this sort of process that aids traceability. But if it's managed by the same organization under like camo, then therefore you just need to raise your work pack for removing it. And then you're gonna fill in some form just for traceability aspects of it. And then you may actually, or you will have to raise a work pack for that aircraft and that forms part of your, to fit it. Okay. And that's the way it, some sort of uh, how it works. Remember, in a 145 as well, you just can't go ahead and rob from one aircraft to the other aircraft. You can't do that. Remember, you need to be authorised to do it. So you expect to see some sort of authorization from the camo. They need to tell you, or they need to give you some sort of authorization to do it. You can't just do it off your own back. Uh, it's not permissible to, to do that. And they will clarify the process really how it should work. But in a normal 145 maintenance organization, that is how you'd actually, you would manage the, uh, the process to rob one component from one aircraft, which is the donor, and then we're gonna fit it to the aircraft that's unserviceable. So there's two ways of doing it. If it's the same, if it's different customer, then you're gonna manage it this way. If it's the same customer or the owner operator, then it's classified as a wing to wing robbery, then you're gonna manage it that way. But you need the approval or the permission from the camo to do that from the beginning. You just cannot go ahead uh, without someone's authority. Because if you do that, you're breaking the intent of the regulation. It needs to come from somebody to do it. And that's it really. You know, just briefly explain, quick overview of, a, of a doing either a robbery, whether it's from a different customer or the same customer. And that's, as I, that's normally referred to as a wing-to-wing uh, -wing robbery. And that's it. Well, if you do have any sort of questions, then please drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to respond to that uh, and give you greater sort of clarification. And I hope today you enjoyed the session, even though it was only short. Happy days. Look after yourselves and take care and I'll catch up with you soon. All the best, bye-bye.